I used to like Ubuntu, but for a combination of canonical reducing functionality to Unity and GNOME trash in their applications, it feels like such an archaic system now, especially when we consider how the other derivatives are moving on. We have Zubuntu using the new modernised XFCE desktop, Lubuntu heading towards the LXQT desktop, Kubuntu using the new Plasma 5 desktop, and Ubuntu Mate adding in some modern tweaks to their classic GNOME style desktop. So what have Canonical done to Unity 7? Not a lot. Again, the focus has been more on the Unity 8 desktop. They've tweaked the animations to improve the startup and shutdown speed, and the dash and heads up display now appear over full screen windows. Okay. Another change is that System D has replaced Upstart. Now, for home users, you won't really notice any difference, other than your system will boot up slightly faster. For enterprise and server users, it's a completely different story. Because log files are now stored in binary format, and an issue I found, is, and I don't know if it's just me, but I have had a lot of problems setting a static IP address on a server install. It's only worked correctly about two out of five times, which is weird considering I was using the same method each time. Mark Shuttleworth's vision of an Ubuntu phone has now been realised with the BQ Aquaris, which has gone on sale, so well done to the canonical team. Most of the bug fixes in this Unity 7.3 desktop in Ubuntu 15.04 have been backported into the long-term support release of Ubuntu 14.04, perhaps making this more of an irrelevant release of Ubuntu. So, the question is, do you want the latest Bleeding Edge software without adding any repositories? And do you want System D instead of Upstart? If so, take Ubuntu 15.04. Otherwise, if you're not bothered about latest software or System D, then take Ubuntu 14.04, the long-term support release, which is still supported for another four years. Either way, you'll end up with the same version of the Unity desktop. Okay, we can see here I'm running the system in VirtualBox, but I have run Ubuntu 15.04 on a full system install, and I've already done the reviews of Ubuntu Mate and Kubuntu on full system installs. Interesting this time around, the VirtualBox guest edition drivers weren't appearing straight away. Can't criticise it too much for that, because they're not that difficult to install. Now we do have this additional driver here, it's recognised from my system that the microcode for the firmware is available. So there is better hardware compatibility with an Ubuntu 15.04. In terms of memory usage, on boot up it's clocking in about 440 meg of RAM, so it's slightly lower than it was before in Ubuntu 14.10. If we right click and go to the change desktop background, you can see the selection of wallpapers that we have, as well as you've got the option here of changing the icon size and the theme. You've got the option of changing the behavior on the menus, so you can either have it as a global menu, or have it in the individual application. There was some mention about showing the menus for all the applications at the same time, but I've not been able to work out where this functionality appears. I was having a good look through Dconf Editor and I couldn't see anything about it. Not everyone is a fan of Global Menu, so at least you do now have the choice. Now I want to talk a bit further about the theming options. There's no way of removing the Close, Minimize, Maximize buttons to the right hand side. That feature was removed a couple of versions ago. That's quite... Now something else, the theming. So if you right click on Firefox, you get the light menus. And if you go to a website, my own website for instance, to distro reviews page because I want something that shows a scroll bar. You see you get a wide scroll bar here. Now if you go across to Nautilus and you right click you get a dark colour menu. So looking at the scroll bar we get a narrow scroll bar. It's so inconsistent still on the theming. It's ridiculous. I've installed the Unity Tweak tool which does give you a few different options here on customizations. Quite a nice tool this, certainly worth installing. If you go to theme and use one I messed around with a while back, the DeLorean Dark theme, you can see I've brought back the transparency effects on the applications. Nice! Then for the menus, right click, get a dark colour background on Firefox, and for Nautilus, aha, dark colour background as well, so a bit more consistent there, although I can't match it for the scroll bars. Wide, narrow. There are a few annoyances really with GNOME, which Unity is based on and uses a lot of the GTK3 GNOME applications. The themes seem to need changing every release. I don't quite know how they manage that really. And Nautilus as well, this has to be one of the worst file managers. I can't believe how many features they have removed from the system. For instance, you can't have individual folder customizations, like I want to have 
list view here, but then when I want to go in my pictures, I want uh, I want icons there. Oh no, you can only switch between one or the other. And you can't have split screen browsing either. Anyway, I could go on for ages about lack of features now in Nautilus. It's what really pushed me over to KDE really, particularly with theming, and you get a much better file manager with Dolphin. The kernel in this release of Ubuntu is 3.19. We just missed out on kernel 4, which would have given us rebootless kernel updates. Now I know that feature's been around if you use the KSplice utility, but it is still a great new feature to have added. But we can look forward to seeing that in Ubuntu 15.10 in October. Although you could do a custom kernel upgrade and get kernel 4 right now. Without much else to discuss really with Ubuntu, I could uh, look at what we get with the applications. Now I don't know if you noticed when I was talking earlier, I showed you the web feature. I disable that by default. Um, under media we get Rhythmbox for the music player and Totem for the video player. Under internet we have Firefox for web browser as well as Ubuntu's own browser. We get Thunderbird for the email client and Transmission for the BitTorrent client. And under Office we get a partial suite of LibreOffice. Here is what I thought of Ubuntu 15.04. So got a few bug fixes on the Unity 7 desktop, a neutral point here that System D has replaced Upstart. But on the downside, it's an inconsistent styling still, and very limited options in customizing the desktop. Now, most of the development work on this distro has been on Unity 8. But overall, I've given it 68%, and I think I'm being a little bit generous on that. Now, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.